Hello, you are watching the MLX Interference Zone tutorial. In this video, we will demonstrate how to configure and use interference zones in MLX. We will discuss the different types of interference zones, the different actions the system takes when a zone is entered, and how to configure and teach interference zones from the MLX HMI. Finally, we will discuss using interference zones and application code. An interference zone is a cubic region of the workspace that can be monitored as to whether the robot TCP has entered this region. In MLX, a user can define up to 32 different interference zones. These cubic regions can be defined in one of two ways, either by specifying the center point of the cube along with a length, width, and height around this point, or by specifying the two corners of a cubic region. When configuring a zone, you can also specify three different actions for the interference zone. If the action is status only, then a bit will turn on when the robot TCP is inside this zone. This is useful for controlling application logic where you might want to disallow certain motions or actions while a robot is in a particular part of the workspace. This status is returned in the cubic IZ status variable inside the MLX data structure. For example, the picture on the right shows that the robot TCP is currently inside zone number 5. If the action is stop motion, the system will abort and an error message will appear when the zone is violated. This is useful for areas of the workspace such as delicate equipment that you want to prevent the robot from interfering with. The final action is clear zone, which deactivates the interference zone. Now we will show how to configure interference zones from the MLX HMI. First we will demonstrate teaching an interference zone using the center point method. On the HMI, click the menu button on the lower left and then click on the cubic IZ by center point screen. On the top left of the screen, you can enter your robot number and your zone ID. Here we will use zone ID 10. Below this, you can enter your zone violation response. And to the right of this, you can enter your center point and dimensions data. Here I'll use the copy current TCP to center point button to teach a zone around the current robot position. You will notice when I click this button, the information above it gets filled in. I will then put in some dimensions for the length, width, and height of the cube. And then I will save this data into the application data structure and activate the interference zone. And over here on the simulation, I will display the position of this interference zone so that we can visualize where it is. Now if you go to your menu and to your IZ status screen, you can see that zone number 10 is now configured to be a center point zone and the red indicator indicates that the robot is currently inside of this zone. Now if we go back to the teach screen, we can jog the robot outside of this cube. If we now go back to the IZ status screen, we can see that the indicator on zone number 10 is no longer red. To prevent flipping back and forth in between these screens when testing a new zone, you can also use this indicator on the bottom right hand side of the teach screen. So if I enter zone number 10 here, you can see that the indicator here will turn on and off as I move inside and outside of the zone. Next we will show the behavior if the zone response is set to stop motion. From the cubic IZ configuration screen, we will change the response to stop motion and then save the interference zone and set it. Now when we try to jog into the zone, you will see that the system aborts and an interference zone violation error occurs. One thing to note is that if you ever get stuck in a zone, the release limits functionality will also release interference zones. So if I bypass the limits on the HMI screen, I can re-enable the robot and now I can jog through the interference zone. Next we will show how to teach an interference zone using the two corner method. From the menu select cubic IZ by two corners. On this screen on the top left you will see you can enter the robot number and the zone number. Here we are using zone number 11. You can also enter a coordinate frame that you want the zone to be relative to. Here we will show how to teach an interference zone relative to a user frame. If you look on the simulation model, you can see that we have taught a user frame at the corner of the pedestal that is holding the pallet. This allows us to set up the two corners as one of the corners can be the origin and the other corner 
can just be the dimensions of the box that you want to go around the palette. So here we will save this data and set this interference zone. And also on the simulation, we will activate where we have placed this interference zone. If you go back to the IZ status screen, you will see that now both zone number 10 and zone number 11 show that they have been configured. And that zone number 11 is figured as two corners. From the teach screen, we will monitor zone number 11. And now we will try to jog into this zone. And you'll see that when it enters it, the zone indicator turns red. Finally, we will look at how to set interference zones from application logic. The two types of zones are set by two different instructions, MLX robot set cubic IZ by center point and MLX robot set cubic IZ by two corners. These instructions take the same parameters that are co configurable from the HMI screens. One important note on interference zones is they will be reset if the system is ever restarted, for example through a power cycle. Thus, it is very important that interference zones are activated as part of the application initialization routine. This concludes the MLX interference zone tutorial. Thank you.